So I want to ask you personally, we've talked about what, where money comes from and banking and how it's created, impacts on society and our communities, but I want to ask you what it is for you, you know, what this really means for you. And, you know, is it an amount? Is it a digit in your bank account? Is it a, is it a number? More than that, I wonder, you know, we give it so much importance, but can we eat it? Can we grow it in our garden? Can we drive it? Where I come from, more around here, can you ride it? I've noticed. It's really a tool, it's something we use to, to engage and have the things that we want and that are important in our life. But it's one way to have the things that we want in our life. It's, it's a mechanism and it's something we created. It's something we use to take care of our families, to grow our business, to support our community. And if we were trying to explain to an alien race what our communities look like and what our businesses look like and the resource allocation that we have in our world, and we all know what that is. We know what our own skills are. We know what our own talents are. We know what our community looks like, what our business resources are, where we have excess capacity, where we have more supply or more time to give to our communities to help pay for the things we need to support ourselves. We all know what those are. But I think if we were trying to describe to an alien race, and in fact, we have alien races on our own planet that some of you are familiar with, where you've gone to areas in Africa or in Peru or the Amazon, where they've never heard of money. They've never used money, but they have thriving societies. And they, they exchange resources in an entirely different way. And when we show them this money that we use and that they need this too, or that we can't do the things that we want to do because we don't have enough of this, they kind of look at us like maybe we're a little insane. That doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? So there's, a, there's an example that I really like in Japan where they have a growing elderly population, one of the fastest in the world. And this goes back a number of years when this started, the system started. But they were looking at how are we going to solve this issue? Because we don't have the social structure, we don't have the investment, we don't have the money to put all of our elderly, our elderly mothers, fathers, and eventually ourselves into care where we're being cared for by others. It's a very expensive process. But we all have parents, and we all have mothers, and we all have fathers, and we want to take care of them. But we live, in, especially in the Western world, we live in a dispersed society. So where I live, my mother lives 400 miles away. Your mother or father might live far away from you. They might live close. But if they don't live close, you want to know that they're taken care of. I should have brought some water. <laughs> you want to know that they're taken care of. And so I can use my time, and I can take care of your father who lives in my community. And I can go help him buy groceries, and I can go make him a meal, maybe help him buy groceries, whatever his needs are. And my mother needs care 400 miles away, and someone else is donating their time to take care of my mother. And that's not a financial transaction. And yet, it's a way to give and exchange and solve a problem that doesn't require too much or too little of dollars in our bank account. So that's one example, but I want to now talk to you about my background and what we what I've been working with small businesses and business to business communities for the past 25 years. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to bring up a screen and I'm going to show you some st statistics, but first of all, I just want to give you a little history of, excuse me one second.
in, in the U.S. and really different parts of the world, there's a business-to-business -business trade exchange community that has been going on for more than 30 years and maybe even closer to 40 years. It started really getting a lot of attention about 30 years ago. But businesses started looking at, and as a small business, in good economic cycles and in bad economic cycles, they all have stresses to compete and thrive and grow, and in, especially in terms of growing public companies that have a lot more resources. And, and we've all seen it in our own communities in downtowns where we've lost a lot of small business ownership, and that means a loss of entrepreneurship, a loss of local leadership on many, many levels. And they said, so what, what can we do that enhances our small business and allows us to do more? And they use their own products and services to exchange into the trade exchange where they earn credits that then they can buy anything in that network that they want. So they're not paying their mortgages, they're not paying their salaries, they're typically not paying their utilities. But by exchanging with other businesses, they are paying for their printing services. They are buying advertising to keep their name out and keep exposure to the public. And this is happening now, and it's been happening for a long time. But now the relevance is, in, in this kind of economic time, the relevance is it could be a matter of surviving or not surviving. So what they do is they offset where they can, so it's complementary. And that's the important part, and we've talked about that quite a bit today. It's not re replacing national currency. And in fact, if, if I walked into any of the businesses that I worked with and said, well, I'd like you to take this currency instead of the U.S. dollar, they would send me on my way very quickly. But if they understand that this is a way to have another bank account, and it's really basically an online banking system and a marketplace, and they're able to now have more, and they're able to be more competitive, and they get new customers from this network, which means they're generating new money in this network. Now they can use that additional capital, whatever you want to call it, and whether you want to call it a trade credit or a barter exchange, it's an organized barter type of a system some people refer to it as. But these companies, I've heard from them for years and years and years that this helped me survive. This helped me to provide benefits to my employees that I couldn't have provided. Health benefits, dental benefits, you name it, that I wouldn't have been able to do. It helped me to thrive during more difficult times where I didn't have to lay off the people that I might have had to lay off without this additional capital resource. So it's become a really important tool for their businesses and I ask you to consider that within your own environments that this process in many different forms exists. The business-to-business -business trade exchange is one form of a currency that helps communities thrive and small businesses thrive. In this is a map of just a very, very small sector of business-to-business -business trade exchanges that are a member of the International Reciprocal Trade Association. There's not a lot of great resources to tell you really what the numbers are. Some people say they're in the thousands, some people say there's a thousand of them that are viable in the world, but they definitely represent um, five to six hundred thousand dollars, or five to six hundred thousand businesses that's verifiable, and so that means there's really a lot more of it than that. In the U.S., the IRS, what's reported, and so the U.S. is one of the few places that has reporting requirements, bad or good, that's where we have data, and what's reported is eight to ten billion dollars a year in this business-to-business -business trade activity per year. That's what's reported. So, in, and that really occurred in 1982 it, through the TEFRA Act, Act, the Tax Equity Fiscal Responsibility Act. And it required trade exchanges to they establish them really as third party record keepers. And so they then requ they're required to report. So really the fear was that when that happened that businesses wouldn't participate because they didn't want to report. 
and it would stop the whole thing, and nobody would want to do it anymore. The truth is it has a lot of value on its own, and what happened instead is that businesses participated more, and more, um, more established businesses, larger businesses, because the fear was gone, because they no longer had to worry about, am I going to get shut down? Am I going to lose this money because the government says it's illegal, or the IRS says that it's illegal, and that we can't do this anymore, and it took the fear out, and also that potentially it was not established that it was legal or not legal. So really it actually then was the beginning of a, of a major growth spurt for this business-to-business -business process in the U.S., and our neighbors in Canada, because we do so much trade together, had similar growth, even though they don't have the same reporting requirements. In most, most countries, the government says you report those transactions, but it's not enforced, and there's not a requirement on us as third-party record keepers to report it for you. So it's less formalized, but I bring this up for, to you because it's a model that is likely to be the going forward model on the business to business side of things. Back to the example of the elderly care program in Japan, because again, this is a completely different system that is not about com commerce, it's not about business, but it's about another example of uh, many, many examples. The elderly care example is honestly one example of a thousand that this time giving, exchanging process facilitates. And it can be youth programs, at youth programs, and you'll learn more about those actually in the next talk. But the point is that it's very diverse. It's an incredibly diverse field, and these are only two examples of things that are happening right now that have a history. Time banks have been around for quite a little while, and these are just, these are maps of only two countries. The, where time banks are in the US, sorry, and in Spain. They're also all over Europe and they're all over the world, but again, not great maps. So, wish I could have given you a whole map of the world. But one of our challenges is to, to be able to see this stuff better, which is a big part of today. It's a big part of why we're here, and a big part of why we keep bringing this forward is so that it's more visible. Because the truth is it's real, and it's happening, and it's, it, it, it's happening on a larger and larger scale all the time. I've seen a, a, hum, a tremendous surge since 2008 that we've all experienced in this crisis and, and seen surges of innovation, new systems, new thinking, new approaches, but in a, in a proliferation from what's already has been occurring from that foundation that's been built over many, many, many years. So I, I want everyone to know this isn't this isn't a fringe idea, not from a banking perspective, not from a community perspective, and not from your own personal perspective. Sufficiency is an act of generating, distinguishing, making known to ourselves the power and presence of our existing resources and our inner resources. If we look around us and within us, ourselves, we will find what we need. There is always enough. And that's from The Soul of Money by Lynn Twist. So whether we're talking about a mutual credit system, a business-to-business -business trade exchange system, a time bank, a let system, which is a less formalized mutual credit type system, they're complementary. They're complementary to each other, and they're complementary to our national currencies. And it's a way for us to look at ourselves in our own lives, and we have, as we've said today, a very diverse audience. So whether you're coming from the financial sector or the business sector or the academic sector or you're a student, I invite you to think about what this looks like in your own life. What if you applied this in some aspect in your own life? Because as you can see, there's many opportunities to do that. On a very personal level, to take care of a parent, to give time to your community, to establish a youth program, 
that helps at-risk youth, environmental programs? How can we support new energy systems by tying them with new currencies that help them to grow faster? How can you grow your own small business and utilize what you have to meet the needs that you have? Using your own resources to meet your own needs. Thank you.